uh, Anger Detection Group. My name is Richard New. I'm going to have the honor of presenting to you today. These are my teammates. This is Nicole Trevetti and Shijo Abraham. They're my guys in charge of statistics, and at the very end down there, that's Convo. He built our user interfaces. So our goal in senior design was to develop an algorithm to reliably detect anger in speech. Now, the construct we put on ourselves was that we wanted to detect phone anger over the phone, kind of in an effort to improve uh, the customer service experience. Our goal specifically this semester were to improve our accuracy and our efficiency, and also to incorporate our algorithm into an end user platform just to kind of show a proof of concept. Now, here's how we actually went about doing it. Our message comes in over the phone. The first thing we do is we extract the vowels from the signal. Now, the reason we extract the vowels is because when you speak, you hold the vowels for a longer duration of time, and you hold it at a constant frequency. This gives us a much better sample to analyze. After that, we do a little bit of error rejection, things like if no one's speaking, we don't analyze it, or if the vowel section doesn't look right, we kick it back to the beginning. Then we go into our three main features here. This is where we actually analyze the signal. The first of which is the fundamental frequency. Now what that is, is uh, as you speak, you get these pulses of air that come through your throat, and it uh, makes your vocal cords oscillate. And the faster this oscillation occurs, the more likely you are to be angry. Now going back to those pulses of air, leads us to our next feature, where as they come up, we look at them in the frequency domain, and they have the slope coming from the fundamental frequency down. Now, the steeper that slope is, the more likely you are to be angry. And the third feature we looked at was energy ratios, the energy of the ratio of the vowel over the total energy. Now, typically on an angry signal, there is much more energy in the vowel than the rest of it. So this ratio will be higher. After that, we send it to our statistical analysis, where we compare it against 1,600 other <coughs> training samples that we have, and we give it a score. And based on that score, we output whether or not our signal is angry, neutral, or if we came up with an error. Now, improvements this semester, the biggest one is we added the ability to live stream. So now, as you talk to our algorithm, it will tell you on the spot whether or not that speaker is angry or if they're not. Our accuracy, we improved from 62 to 83%, and our efficiency from about half a sample a second to 50 samples a second. This we credit to the vowel extraction. We're looking at less data and getting more from it and just a better understanding of the MATLAB programming language. Uh, with that said, we have two demonstrations for you today if you want to come by. The first of which is a bunch of pre-recorded samples, so you can guide, kind of get an idea of angry versus neutral sound. We also put some fun things on there, like uh, our President Barack Obama, who's infamous for just always being calm. We got a sample of him actually being angry in his own calm way, so come check that out. <laughs> and then the uh, other thing we have is you can actually come and talk to our algorithm. We'll record a little snippet of your speech, and we'll tell you whether or not you're angry. So with that said, are there any questions? So you have two different colors of boxes. Uh, oh, my yeah, apologies. So Everything is yellow. That's one question. And another question is what kind of statistical analysis do you do? Well, I meant to say that I forgot, obviously. Everything in yellow is something that we improved drastically or added this semester. So last semester we had a couple features. We were kind of going down the wrong pathway, but Dr. Hansen set us straight. So we kept the fundamental frequency and everything else was new. And the statistical analysis, we use something called the Bayesian hypothesis. So we built two training models, one angry and one neutral. So we take the signal and we compare it against the angry model, the neutral model, and then we would take the, uh, we put them over each other to get the ratio, and then uh, take the logarithm of that, and that would give us a score. So if it was more likely to be angry, our score would be higher. If it was more likely to be neutral, our score would be negative. Yeah. Right. 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 So yeah. the fundamental uh, vowel extraction, hypothesis that the vowels contain the energy that the angry did? Yeah. Where, where did that research come from? Well, Dr. Hansen first pointed us in the right direction. We also pulled that out from a book called The Speech Chain. It kind of explains how when you make words, like, for example, the word break, you spend very really little time on the and a, but you say a for a very long period of time. And you're holding that constant as you speak. So that just gives you a steady frequency and a really good sample to analyze. And the Energy, that was just from the research we did. So there's a bunch of different research papers that we have. We have a more compiled, I can show you that. Like How are you going to distinguish between the vowels and consonants? The vowels, it's actually pretty accurate because what we did is we used energy levels. So we took the ratio of the peak of the signal and then uh, we put that over everything. And if it was below, the vowels are so high in energy that we just set a threshold. If the ratio was above 0.2, it would be a vowel because we spend very little energy in everything. Not about. 
Just uh, some common questions we've got. We have trouble analyzing other languages. It's uh, from the way they form the vowels. They won't be steady. They'll dip in the middle of the vowels, which throws off a couple of our features. 